Hi there, it's Jeff here with another uh, 25 mark essay question. Let's focus on the labour market this time, in particular the economics of flexible labour markets. So here's the context first of all. An estimated 4.5 million people in the UK work in the gig economy, including delivery drivers and ride share operators. Many lack formal job contracts, leading to debates over flexibility versus insecurity. And the question evaluates the impact of labour market flexibility on worker welfare in the UK gig economy or an occupation of your choice. Here's my first KA paragraph. One positive effect of labour market flexibility is the better work-life balance it offers workers. In theory, the ability to choose when and where to work allows gig workers, could be Uber drivers, delivery riders, to fit their work around personal commitments, and that could lead to improved non-monetary welfare. Consequently, this flexibility can benefit groups such as students, carers, or those with disabilities. And that's a bit of application there. Most gig workers in the UK are young adults, I think well over half actually are aged between 18 and 34. So for some, the gig economy provides an entry point into the labour market, where the traditional jobs and careers don't always offer as a result, labour market participation can increase as more people are actively in the labour market with a job, reducing inactivity and contributing positively to potential output and growth in the UK. So a positive paragraph, but then you have to evaluate that. However, this theory assumes, nice to use of the word assumption there, that workers can freely choose their hours without adverse consequences. But in fact, many platforms now use performance-based algorithms or incentives that penalise inactivity. So this can cause situations where workers feel pressurised to be constantly available, leading to increased stress and burnout, which is negative for their non-financial welfare. One certainly thinks about that every time delivery drivers arrive late at night towards the end of a, of a shift. Furthermore, since many gig workers earn below the minimum wage after costs, especially during those off-peak quiet hours, choosing when to work becomes a constrained choice rather than a genuine freedom. The gig economy promotes underemployment and many people in these jobs need extra income to stay above the relative poverty line. Indeed, millions of people in work in the UK are still claiming means-tested benefits such as universal credit. Many of the gig economy platforms have monopsony power in the labour market in theory, this means they're hiring fewer workers at low wages than in a competitive market. Now, bringing in monopsony power would allow you to use the monopsony diagram. Not specifically required for Edexcel, but certainly useful for AQA. So you see here the demand for labour, mostly revenue product of labour, downward sloping. Labour supply curve is the average cost of labour. and But the marginal cost goes up because if you're having to bid the wage up to get extra workers, then the marginal cost of each extra worker is higher the profit maximising employment level is at point uh, E2, employment E2. The marginal, revenue, uh, marginal cost of labour equals uh, marginal uh, revenue at W2. But of course, the firm owner that has to pay wage W3 to employ those workers. So workers in that sense are being paid less than the true value of their marginal revenue product, which is a form of worker exploitation. Now, the other diagram you could draw is simple supply and demand for labour, showing shifts in demand. And with the gig economy, the labour supply is highly elastic because workers can be brought onto the platform. Second KA point. On the other hand, the major negative impact of labour market flexibility is the erosion of job protections that undermine worker welfare. So gig economy workers, often characterised as contingent or independent contractors, are often excluded from legal rights, such as sick pay. Paid holidays, redundancy protections. And this means that when faced with a demand on an income shock, such as family illness, accidents, or when market demand slumps, these workers, rather than the business, bear the full financial risk. Pardon me. They bear the full financial risk. For example, a nice bit of data there, a recent Resolution Foundation report found that nearly two-thirds of gig workers had less than £1,000 in savings. Now, typically, they're younger workers, of course but they are living from paycheck to paycheck, leaving them especially vulnerable to sudden loss of earnings. And this is clearly affecting their welfare. It leaves them in a very precarious position and at risk of falling into persistent relative poverty. 
It also means, of course, it finds it very hard to find somewhere to rent or to to, to buy. Often these gig economy workers have to live uh, within groups or with their family. However, evaluation. Some measures have been taken to mitigate these risks. The Supreme Court a few years ago ruled that Uber drivers are workers rather than self-employed, entitling them to minimum wage and paid holidays. Indeed, some platforms have introduced limited insurance schemes for illness and injury. So you can have a monopsony power, but you don't necessarily have to behave like a theoretical monopsonist. And there is increasing political pressure for businesses such as Uber and Delivery and parcel courier companies to guarantee paying the minimum wage to their workers. Unless companies do this, there's the risk of a customer backlash eventually that could affect their revenues and profits. So we've done the bulk of the answer. We've looked at the arguments for and against essentially the, the gig economy from a worker welfare point of view. Here's our final reasoned judgment. In conclusion, while labour market flexibility offers short-term benefits in terms of autonomy and access to work, these are often outweighed by the lack of employment protections, instability of income and limited control over working conditions. The initial theoretical appeal of flexible labour markets does not fully account for power imbalances and others monopsony that shape gig work in practice. As a result, in my view, the overall impact on worker welfare is more negative than positive. Uh, you could use the phrase on balance there. And with around one in 10 workers employed in the gig economy, this is significant for the welfare of millions of people. A nice, nuanced and balanced final reason judgment there, I think, overall. Thanks for joining in this one. More essay marks, essay questions to come. Keep working hard on revision. If you found the video useful, consider giving it a like, please. It does help the, the YouTube algorithm find other like-minded people. Take care and see you soon.